Welcome to the San Jose Santa Clara Regional Wastewater Facility, the largest advanced wastewater facility on the West Coast. My name is Kristen and I'll be leading you on a virtual tour of the facility today, sharing facts and explaining how things work along the way. Thanks for coming along. Please sit back and enjoy the ride. The facility is located in North San Jose on 2,600 acres along the South San Francisco Bay. The facility serves 1.4 million residents in eight South Bay cities, portions of Santa Clara County, and businesses with more than 17,000 main sewer connections. You might be wondering, what do we do here? Simply put, we clean wastewater to protect public health and the environment and support the local economy. When we use water in our homes and businesses, it goes down the drain and heads to the regional wastewater facility. This facility cleans the wastewater before it is released into the South San Francisco Bay. Built in 1956, the regional wastewater facility is a round-the-clock operation that cleans an average of 100 million gallons of wastewater per day. The site includes a 175-acre wastewater processing area, a 750-acre sludge drying area, and an 850-acre former salt production pond. Just like a lot of public infrastructure in the U.S. right now, the San Jose Santa Clara Regional Wastewater Facility has been operating 24-7 for over 60 years and is in need of major repair and replacement. To keep the facility working at optimal levels into the future, the City of San Jose is rebuilding and modernizing the facility through its Capital Improvement Program. There's a lot of construction going on right now, bringing exciting new technologies and updated treatment processes to the facility. Several thousands of miles of sewer pipeline bring wastewater from homes and businesses from throughout Santa Clara County. Once the water gets to the facility, there are about 150 additional miles of pipeline underground to move water and solids from place to place. The largest of these is 11 feet in diameter, and the oldest pipe still in use was installed in 1958. We are now standing at the Headworks, the facility's front door. This is where wastewater begins the pretreatment process. Here at the Headworks, large screens remove debris, such as sticks, rocks, trash, rags, and baby wipes. Next, the wastewater flows to grit chambers that remove heavier objects like sand and gravel, which are then taken to a landfill. After the large solids have been removed from the wastewater, the treatment process begins. The first stage is primary treatment. This physical process removes half of the contaminants and solids. It all takes place here in these large primary tanks. Flights or fiberglass bars move across the top, skimming off things that float, like fats, oils, and grease, and continue on a circular path to the bottom, like a bicycle chain, where they scrape solid particles into a hopper at the end of the track. The primary treatment process takes about an hour and the water comes out 50% cleaner. Secondary treatment comes next. This biological stage takes about six hours and the water comes out 95% cleaner. Let's start here with the aeration tanks. Air is pumped into these tanks, creating a lot of bubbles. These bubbles cultivate the growth of naturally occurring bacteria that remove organic pollutants in the water. Here we are at part two of the secondary treatment process, the clarifier tanks. In these large tanks, wastewater is slowed down and air is no longer pumped in. Following the aeration process, the bacteria are big, fat, and happy. No longer in their oxygen-rich environment, they stick together, get heavy, and gravity helps them sink to the bottom. A mechanical arm moves slowly across the bottom of the tank to pick up the bacteria, which are then returned to the aeration tanks or piped to the digesters.
The tertiary process takes place here in the filtration building and is the third and final level of treatment. Tertiary treatment is just like your home water filter. The wastewater flows through several filter beds composed of gravel, sand, and anthracite coal to remove small suspended solids. We follow filtration with chlorine to further clean the water and a second chemical to neutralize the chlorine before it is discharged to the bay. Without this final step, the chlorine could harm sensitive aquatic life. Tertiary treatment lasts for about eight hours and the water comes out 99% clean. So you might be wondering what happened to all of the solid material that was extracted throughout the treatment process. It goes to these digester tanks where it is processed for up to 30 days. These airtight tanks are kept hot at 98 degrees. They contain naturally occurring bacteria that digest sludge and produce methane gas, helping meet the facility's energy needs. From the digester tanks, sludge is pumped into lagoons to stabilize and covered with water to control the odors. After three years, the sludge is moved to drying beds. This step produces high quality Class A biosolids. Finally, biosolids are used as daily cover at the Newby Island landfill to prevent wind blown debris and discourage animal scavengers. Once the water has been completely treated after filtration, about 90% of the treated water is piped under the street to the outfall channel. It flows to the Artesian Slough, then Coyote Creek, and then the South San Francisco Bay, and eventually past the Golden Gate to the Pacific Ocean. The remaining 10% flows to the South Bay Water Recycling System for further treatment and use for irrigation, industrial processes, building cooling, and toilets. Every gallon of recycled water used conserves a gallon of drinking water. Since 1997, the facility's recycled water has saved 52 billion gallons of drinking water. That's enough drinking water to supply about 750,000 households for a year. Without the facility, 100 million gallons of polluted sewage from 1.4 million residents and businesses would flow into the bay every day. Thank you for joining us on the tour today. We hope you have a better understanding of our facility, the wastewater treatment process, and its impact on the environment. Now that you know where it goes, we hope you think of us the next time you flush. Bye. Stay up to date with the Regional Wastewater Facility and the Environmental Services Department at sjenvironment.org or follow us on social media at sjenvironment.